Welcome to the second series of the Robots of the Dawn. This is Professor Devipriya meeting you again in the second video. So in the first video, we saw the introduction to Robots of the Dawn and we also saw chapter one in the first video. Now we're moving into the second chapter. Okay, so just a recap of what has happened in chapter one. We saw that there was a case in the outer space, Aurora, and Bailey is being called to uh, Aurora to solve a case. And I told you there's a murder which has happened and that's not someone, uh, a person has not been involved, but a robot has been involved. So we call it as a roboticide. So Bailey, a simple earthman is being called to Aurora to solve this case. So in chapter two, we see that Bailey is boarding an Auroran spaceship. I told you that Bailey has traveled to this outer space planet. This is not his first time. He has done this before. Earlier he traveled to Solaria and traveling to Aurora is his second travel. Okay, so Solaria's uh, spaceship was not as comfortable as Auroran spaceship. This Auroran spaceship is very comfortable for Bailey. Okay, so he's boarding an Auroran spaceship. I told you uh, these spacer planets are completely different. Earth is still the same. Earth is still seen as a carrier of infections. You have this microbes, you have viruses and bacteria still living on Earth. Whereas in Aurora, or be it Solario, or be it any other outer space or planet, you have no microbes there. You don't have any virus, you don't have any bacteria. So there are no infections. People there, I told you earlier, they live for around 150 to 180 years. Okay, when it's in Earth, the lifespan is furthermore decreasing. Okay, so before Bailey can enter into Earth, he goes in a process of chemical sterilization. Okay, all his dress is being burnt. Okay, and he undergoes, he himself undergoes a medical treatment, a chemical treatment, where he gets rid, get rid of all these microbes and bacteria. Okay, so he boards this Aurora spaceship and he is attended by a robot called Giska. Okay, robot Gizgard is a very primitive robot. Okay, there are only two human form robots. One is Janda, the other one is robot Daniel. Okay, you can see robot Daniel here. But the robot which has been killed, the roboticide has happened only to robot Janda. Okay, robot Daniel, which is one more human form robot, still exists. Alright, so robot Gizgard attends Bailey at first. Okay, so he is guarding and helping with all the things for Bailey. So in the beginning, it is Robert Giscard who is attending Bailey. And afterwards, he meets, he is joyfully reunite, reunited with Robot Daniel. Okay, Robot Daniel is not a new robot for Bailey. Okay, in the before prequels, you have the Naked Sun and the Caves of Steel. In both the novels, in both the fiction, you can see Robot Daniel. Okay, robot Daniel has solved, has helped Bailey to solve the cases in Solaria as well as in on Earth. Okay, so he is very happy. Robot Daniel is not a robot for Bailey. It's just like a one more uh, company, a human for, one more human friend for Bailey. Okay, and in all the cases, it is robot Daniel which has helped Bailey to solve the case. So this error in case, I told you, it's very complicated because in the entire universe, I told you there are only there's only one person who can create such robots, and it is Dr. Hanfastoff. Okay, only Dr. Hanfastoff. You can find the spelling in here, Dr. Hanfastoff. Okay, it is only Fastoff who can create such human robots. No one else on the universe, be it in the 50 outer space planets, you can find a single person who can create such human form robots. And no one knows the theory. No one can also find the theory from Dr. Hanfastoff. Okay. And there's also no one on the earth who can destroy such robots. No one knows the theory. Okay. So the only possibility who could have killed this robot gender could have been only Dr. Hanfastoff. But it is the killer is actually not Dr. Hanfastoff. Okay. And this person is a very good hearted person. And he also supports earth. Okay, so Bailey has to save Dr. Hanfastoff as well as the Earth. Okay, I told you out of all the 550 spacer planets, Aurora is the most powerful. So you need to save Dr. Hanfastoff's power also on Aurora. He, he is a central political power on Aurora too. 
okay for earth to be on safer side dr han fastolf has to be in political path okay so that is why he is very happy to join with robert daniel because it's quite complicated case no one i told you earlier no one can create and also destroy so the robot has been destroyed so it's naturally dr han fastolf but he hasn't done so something mysterious could have happened and that has to be sorted out by bailey okay so robot daniel and bailey they discussed the case all these particular details which i have mentioned they discussed the case okay and then he is bored so aurora is new for him okay earth is different solaria is different aurora is different each outer planets are different okay so before you need before you enter into aurora you need to study about aurora so he studies books and also views films on aurora okay he finds aurora to be entirely different because people on aurora they live outside i told you people on earth they live only underground they create cities where the temperature is controlled you don't have sun rays you don't have rainfall you don't have wind blowing nothing everything is temperature control okay but people on aurora they live outside whereas bailey is actually agrophobic because he is an earthman he goes there he feel he has a fear in facing outside okay so he studies about aurora in chapter 2 in chapter 3 gisgard is providing him a device a device to view the space okay it's just like how we play video games okay with a simple joystick you can rotate and you can play so likewise a device has been given and you can see a 3d dimensional screen before uh, bailey and in that however you rotate in whichever direction you rotate you are able to look into the universe the planets whatever is there okay so this is the first time bailey is actually looking into universe because earlier i told you it was a simple uh, solarian spaceship and for the first time he is boarding an aurorian spaceship which is technically far advanced so with this simple device he looks into the universe he is not comfortable looking the outside because earthmen are really not comfortable when they view outside okay so he provides a device and bailey views aurora okay and aurora the sight of aurora is not happy for them okay because people live on outside they face the direct sun rays which is not comfortable for bailey bailey i told you is agrophobic okay and and he is also not able to shut this viewer down okay so he is calling for help and before robert daniel gisgard comes for rescue and removes the viewer from his hand okay so this is happening in chapter 3 in chapter 4 you can see this aurorian uh, spaceship landing on aurora and it is dr fastoff who is greeting him okay and he takes him in an air sealed foil okay it's not like it's like normal car where the temperature is controlled because in that air sealed foil also you need to control the temperature and no sun rays should fall from outside okay because this fellow bailey is acrophobic so they meet they fast off takes him okay and he take they talk over the lunch they discuss the case the same things which robot daniel mentioned earlier has been discussed also by dr han fast off okay so he says that no one can create except me so it should be only me who has killed or who has committed this roboticide but i actually didn't commit okay so he suggests that there must be a problem on an error which has happened in jander's brain okay in telling this he talks about dr susan calvin susan calvin is a robotist who lived centuries ago and when susan calvin created one such robot there was some error in connecting the wires and susan calvin actually got uh, the robot which created by susan calvin actually got telepathic abilities telepathic abilities you'll be able to read person's mind opposite okay so this robot created by dr susan calvin actually got telepathic ability and this was found by her and this was not intentionally done but it was just a program error a wire was disconnected and that's how this robot got okay so fasto suggests that jander's brain could have also got into such complications there might be some program error or something and out of which jander's a uh, brain could have been freezed out okay so all these things are suggested in chapter 4 and in chapter 
uh, Bailey feels that his life is a demonstration by Dr. Hanfastoff without his knowledge. Okay, if you read the novel, you'll come in, you'll come to know about minute nuances. So they talk about Spicer. Spicer is just a device which is used to, dis to distribute the spices on the dining table. Okay, but it's very sharp. So what Dr. Hanfastoff does is he takes a spicer and throws over this fellow Bailey. Okay, and before he does. You can see that Giscard and Robot Daniel comes to his rescue. Okay, Robot Daniel has already got the spicer and Giscard is just two feet behind this fellow. Okay, so he just demonstrates how uh, safety is ensured to this fellow Bailey on earth to carry out the discussions. Okay, and you can see that uh, in their discussion they come to know that Jander has been in someone else's possession. Okay, and it is Gladier. Gladier is a person who comes in uh, the naked sun. Okay, it is Gladier's husband who has died in Solario. She is not an Aurora. She is not an Earth woman. She is a Solarian. Okay, so Gladier's husband has actually died, and this fellow Bailey has went to Solario to solve this particular case. So, uh, Gladier is not someone new for Bailey. So, he comes to know that this robot Jander has been in her possession before he died. Okay, so they go outside. Outside is something not comfortable for Bailey. Okay, but before he gets outside, there's a small um, test for Bailey. Okay, he visits personal. Personal is a restroom. Okay, in Aurora. It's not called as restroom, but personal. Once Bailey entered the personal, it's completely different. You don't have any walls. There are no, on four sides, you don't have walls. You only have illusions where you have the outside. Okay, the outside, every time I mention, it is the nature with sun rays and the wind blowing. Okay, so the personal, you don't have any walls on the four side. You only have illusions having outside. Okay, and there's no water, there's no water tap or anything. When Bailey felt like he wanted to wash the hands, he, you know, it's all neurocentric. When you feel that you need to wash your hands, automatically there's water coming down. Okay, and you feel like you need to use any soap, you don't have any physical soap. So you think that neurocentric controls work and in that water itself you'll get soap. So you wash the hands. Okay, and say you were washing your face, Bailey when washed his face, uh, there wasn't any physical towel. Okay, so he felt like his face has to be dry, there were dry currents blowing and his face automatically dried. So all these techniques, he visits his personal and everything has been done. In chapter 6, he meets Gladio. Okay, uh, Gladio when I told you, they have already met in uh, the earlier prequel novel, which is, which is Naked Sun. And there's a small intimate moment between Gladio and Fastol, sorry, Gladio and uh, Bailey earlier. So that has been recollected by both of them. They discuss the case. So Gladio uh, is happy again to see Bailey. Okay, and she says that when Robot Jander died, she was the only human on in the house. Okay, and with all the robots guarding the house there could not have been any human interruption to come and physically kill robot Jander. Okay, some mental freeze out must have happened is what Gladio also tells and then um, Bailey wants to know about the relationship with Fastoff, Gladio and Fastoff's relationship and she rejects any love affair between them. Okay, so this is what has happening in chapter 6 and chapter 7 he leaves Gladio's house Okay, and after all this has been investigation has been done, he leaves Gladio's house and they join for Fasto's dinner. Okay, uh, he fe feels that Fasto feels that Gladio has been questioned a lot. Okay, and they have their dinner, they leave. Okay, and he goes for a sleep. He's not having a very sound sleep because there are all illusions when the light is turned off. You have all illusions on the ceiling. Okay, so he calls Robot Daniel to shut everything and that's complete darkness and Bailey is trying to sleep. Okay, in chapter 8, uh, Bailey is not woken up. So, Gisgard actually uh, gives a wake up drug and that drug is not physically given. It's just circulated in the room through air and Bailey rises and they discuss that there are no threats around and 
he meets Dr. Han fast off in the breakfast table. So until this, we have seen chapter 8. We have uh, 12 more chapters which will be discussed in the next video. Until then, stay connected. Thank you.